Basically what we are talking about is, we always should like, the future should be, if you want to achieve, that means basically uh, to go move forward, we need to have openness. That means basically we have to be able to collaborate each other. Rather than partition ourselves, like uh, uh, the basically like our, uh, what we are trying to do is a proprietary type of things that, uh, that uh, uh, not doing proprietary stuff. So we have to have an open source standards. So anyway, I was talking to uh, Dr. Sanmat. Now we were having a fantastic uh, discussion out there while we were having coffee. And uh, so one of the things is that what we are worried. Now I am worried about this. So the, let's look at 2020 and what I am worried about. Now the thing is, uh, the applications can also, basically if you have like, if you are used to Microsoft uh, applications, let's say OS or operating system, the browsers, what happens? You have to purchase them and you need, so some of them have, uh, like they, they are maybe digital divide. But if you have open source free software, because open source has a commercial ones also, but if you use them, obviously, like, for instance, that we can have, we can get connected to the internet. Now, if you look at Google, Google is doing this. Google is basically giving you apps, applications. Very freely you are getting the applications, right? But there is something very interesting happening. I don't know whether you guys know this. One is data. Data is being centralized. That means whatever we do right now, Google knows precisely. Now, if you go on Gmail or... Uh, if you go and uh, use their applications, there's a data about the way I, we behave. There's another thing, they want, there's something else also is happening. Google wants to create one of the largest DNA databases, right? So they want to have a DNA sequence, you know, like what we made of. So they want to put it into the centralized uh, system. So that means in the future, you say Harsha, what is Harsha made of? You would be able to know. Right? But they may not let everybody know, but they can actually would know exactly. So the, what, not only what you made of, what will happen another five years time? Would you have cholesterol, you would have diabetes, or like all kind of stuff that they can be able to predict. Right? That's kind of scary. Right? So the other thing that we have, another one is, so that's why I said uh, 1984. You know what the 1984 is? Right? So we can actually tag you also, right? If you think that your data is there, you can tag, right? So this is something that we have to, so what we were thinking of in 2010, if this go like, let's say that everything works well, you have the applications, you have everything freely and you are on the internet and you work without any sort of hindrance. So the data, if it's centralized, then we have. So what we have to do, we may have to think about, there's a jurisdiction, there is a privacy laws, how would you actually have the data? We also have to think about. Other thing is, at the moment, actually, internet, because of internet, there are a couple of things happening. One is the all multinationals can go to your village level even now. You can go. So in the future, I see everybody is doing business in the village level. You don't have to come to uh, Colombo or a city or anything. You can actually work from, from your home. The next one is, in the reverse direction, that our little companies, so like uh, X and Y Z company uh, in uh, uh, well, the Sinigama can actually do business. It's happening right now. So if you think about it, uh, our BP operations actually work like that way. So that means you can actually sell something to New York, or you can be actually traders, you know, to them. Uh, the, you can be intermediary between this. So uh, what I'm trying to say is that there is a, there is a, there are both ways it can happen. So in 2020. Well, I see like this. One thing is there will be more privacy if, let's say, win-win situation, right? I'll be speaking in Singhala. Someone in New York will be seeing that in English. So I will be, I'll be just speaking it. In the tools, they will be, you will see it in English, right? You can hear it in English. He will speak in English. I'll hear it in Singhala or Urdu. It's happening now that also, right? Okay. So those the tools are making that people are. That's why it's, it's a language is not going to be a barrier. You can do business from here to there. That is, if we don't centralized, if we have decentralized situation. But the fears are quite a lot. You can be tagged whether you are in Colombo, whether you are in New York, 
whether you are in Brussels or whether you are in Sinigama, well, you, because whenever that you use the mobile, right, you know where you are, right? So we need to do certain things in order to have the privacy. The behavior also be, can be tracked. Also, you can predict the behavior also. So for which also now, uh, Dr. Salma is saying that when I was discussing, he said, we should not have, the, that means when we should not have a centralized data, that the great part of the Google, what they're trying to, they have to have data. So we should also ask the share of data Basically, that, that's what he said. Not only uh, uh, Google is giving it, that's what, you know, uh, that's kind of interesting. Google is actually giving you all the applications you want. But what is important is the data, quote and unquote data. You think about data, the way you work, the whatever your data, it is centralized. So, uh, so what I'm trying to actually, uh, so the, my fears I have told you. Uh, so we will, uh, the other one I am a little bit worried about is the, Loose of cultural identity. Uh, I don't think that will happen in a way. Uh, the way that the cultures work is it's just amazing. If you look at the many thousands of history, what happens is, well, now even if, let's say, we have so many people coming. Now, if you look at India, for instance, there are so many migrations and reverse migrations. Sri Lanka is an, uh, basically insulate, uh, insulated because it's an island. When people come, what happens is, there is a culture won't become the culture that the people that are invading or coming in, but instead it actually evolves. So what is happening here is that will evolve. So anyway, uh, the, whether we are going to lose cultural identity or not, I don't feel, I don't think that will happen total in, tot in total, but there should be some sort of evolution will happen. So because of internet, uh, like uh, like you guys, you know, know more about somebody. Uh, in, uh, in Canada or in America, what they're doing in the morning or whether they go to office or what they're doing in the office, than your neighbor, right? Okay, <laughs> neighbor, what you're doing, right? Right now that's happening, right? So in 2020, I think you would be know who, or what will be in, uh, who will be doing in somewhere else than uh, your neighbor uh, next door. But whether it is good or bad, I'm not sure, right? Um, so anyway, the cultural identity, I don't think that will lose tot in total. So, uh, so that's, as I told you, there will be lots of tools that will uh, make it enable that the language is something just, uh, uh, something it's not, you don't have to worry about language. The language is just a matter of you can just switch. Well, what, what I'm seeing for the next five years, and that's happening now in Sri Lanka. We have to standardize. Now all the mobiles can be able to, you can uh, basically standard keyboards, uh, the standardization must happen. So when that happens, we can be able to interchange ideas, uh, the, the, like with using even the mobiles and those kind of devices. So anyway, this is, uh, so the idea I want to make for our perspective, I think in order to keep our internet basically the 2020, to keep it not centralized. The idea is, I think, we need to have open source software. We need to cultivate the idea of concept of collaboration, idea of open source software, and also there should be a business model. My idea is, I think, what the Google is already doing that, without knowing for the software, they have put up whatever the, whatever the, the oh, speakers. So, um Without further ado, let me introduce our first speaker, Harsha Vijayavardhana. You all know him, I'm sure. So I'll read maybe one paragraph of his very distinguished biography. He is a biochemist turned ICT consultant with more than 20 years of experience in hardcore ICT. He worked as a consultant at the University of Colombo School of Computing for the last 15 years. He also conducted some workshops there for this conference earlier this past weekend. He's been involved in major government ICT projects. He designed and implemented major government networks such as the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, uh, IT Department of Sri Lanka, as well as the PRIU, Project Research Information Unit of the Presidential Secretariat. A huge, very distinguished biography, and with apologies to him, I'm going to say, please come up right away and give us your keynote address. A round of applause for our final keynote of this conference, Harsha Vijayavardhana. Well, thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. I, uh, I'll try to uh, reduce my uh, future uh, of internet. That is the, you know, the, the crystal ball. 
that what we are going to see. You know? So uh, to uh, about a f let's say 15 to 20 minutes. But before we go to the future, we should also look look at the past. Without the past, you can't see the future. So um, so what I have done is I'm just just going to go through a very fast, which what I know of the past little bit, um, the what I had experienced. So I start by saying there was a very interesting project that I was involved in as the internet is concerned, that's called Kothmale Internet Project, long time back, somewhere in 1999. Um, so uh, this was in the hill country. A lot of Sri Lankans also may not be knowing about this project now. They have already forgotten about it. This was the first multipurpose telecenter that we worked on. Those days, the, they, were, they were not called multipurpose telecenters. Well, this, this is the time where, in fact, when I went to Kothmale that time, um, there was no... Uh, not, on, not no internet, but also there were no phone lines. So there was only one single phone line, so we converted this into a, what we call a, uh, we connected it to a line of sight. And uh, so what happened with a very few short period of time, and in fact, Dihan is here. Dihan, you are here. 